Hello. How are you today? You're baking in the sunshine, hopefully. Um, well, good afternoon, Shirley Anster. How are you today? Um, I'm, oh, here we go again on Facebook. I know you're all there, but I can't see your comments. So I'll refresh you and then it's going to take me an age to get you back again. Anyway, what you want to... I've been putting together some kits for Crate and Craft today. It's, it takes an awful long time to get all these things organised, but there you go. Um, hello, Margaret. I'm still waiting for Facebook to catch up. Soz. Um, oh, hello, here we go. Hi, Linda. Ruby and Coco say hi. <laughs> Ruby, Coco, Ruby, Coco, Coco, Coco. Um, she's suffering a bit in the heat, so she's trying to find any cool spot on any bit of slabs or paving or concrete as she can, probably like your two are as well. Um, hi, Sandra. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Tracy. Morning. Oh, after where are we? Afternoon, Lisa. Um, hello, Deborah. I'm Mandy and Margaret. And Tracy, there we all are. That's better. Let me just scroll down. Sorry if I miss anybody. Um, hello, Janet and Susan on Facebook and Olivan. Hello, and Brenda's in Kentucky. Um, hi, Heather. She's in Italy. Um, right, we've got. I've got some new stuff to show you, and then I've picked out two sewing machine feet. So one is a piping foot and one is a rolled hem foot. So I thought we'd have a look at those and the way that they work and, and what you can do with them and get the most out of them. Because it's always quite nice to have the right tools for the job. And although you can make piping and I quite often do without a piping foot, it's so much easier with it. A rolled hem foot, the reason I picked this one was uh, Kim was using it yesterday. She's made herself a dress, which you'll probably be seeing on her Instagram pet shirt dress. Uh, probably seen on Instagram very shortly. And it was made from a very fine viscose and she didn't want to deep hem on it. And it was curved as well, which can always be a problem with the hem content. Um, so she used her old hem foot on it. So I thought, oh, while it's there, while it's out, we'll use that as well. Um, hi, Tracy. She's got a pink pass with strawberry thief in it. Ooh. Um, hi, Denise. Warm, warm and dull. Oh, it's, it's like, oh, baking hot blue skies here. Um, hello, Mona in Lebanon. Brenda's in Tank Kenta. You on both? Um, hi June. Warm and dull in Leicestershire. Oh, I, th I think we've uh, we've looked out. Although it's very it's very glowy in here today. Um, hi Jill. Oh, she put it on there already. Jill, have a look on Kim's in Instagram page and have a look at the shirt. It is beautiful, and we've still got some of the fabric left on the website too. So there you go. Um, hi Audrey. Hi Anne. Um, hi Karen. Oh, Carol saw a shirt as well. I, I don't. She's getting ready to go home at the moment, so I don't suppose she's watching. But I shall pass on your comments to her um, when I speak to her later today. Doing very well, thank you, Alan. How's you? How's your nan? Um, hi, Cecil. It's wet in France. Oh, Julie Jones. Oh, Kirsty says her shirt is on Instagram. It looks lovely. It is. She's really pleased with it as well. You know, when something just turns out right. And I think it's the first time she's done a collar and a stand. And it just, it's a, it's a really, really nice shirt. Um, you said you couldn't see Facebook. So you oh, I see you, Brenda. Now I've got it back again now. It just, sometimes Facebook's a little bit slow for me to start seeing comments. I'm never quite sure if you're there. Um, Ellen's eventually got home from hospital and turned a, uh, it's turned into a beautiful sunny afternoon. Oh, Sarah says you should. I wish she was still here. I'd call her in and uh, and let her read your comments. Um, nearly late to the show, says Anne, and has it have you reminded me? <laughs> oh, St David's in Wales. Oh, how lovely. So if we try and be quick, we're getting more people doing the picking and the packing now, so hopefully things are going out quite quickly. Um, picked a half-yard gift from a charity shop. I gave them twice what they wanted. That's very sweet of you, Lois. Thank you. Hi, Anne. Hi, Tracy. Hi Cheryl, the bottom of the shirt matches up perfectly too. It does actually, doesn't it? That's uh, that took her a long time to actually measure it and just make because it's she's a bit of a perfectionist, is my daughter. I probably wouldn't have worried too much about it, but she does. Um, hello Anne in Mablethorpe. Anyway, got some new fabrics to show you. Really quite excited about these. These are Clothworks, and we have, I have to say, we have a very good price on Clothworks fabric. Clothworks are up there with your art gallery fabrics and your Lewis and Irons, as in quality. Um, but they're, they're just a little bit different, these are. So, um, I'm just going to, uh, bear with me a second while I bring the website up on my phone so I can see what they, they're called, because they've, um, they've literally only just gone on today. So I can't remember what they're called. Um, 
Quilting cotton, they're 112 centimetres wide, so I'm taking an age to load, bear with me a second. Not coming up. But if you go on to the new in, uh, new arrivals on the website, then you'll see this one. Oh, Angela. Oh, I've got news on the, in fact, I've got another bag somewhere. Oh, there it is, it's down there. I got a little carried away making these. But I'll, I'll show you, aren't they fabulous? Um, I'll show you those in more detail in just a second and explain. They're half your club projects for, for Friday. It's the first on Friday. Um, oh, Sarah, by the way, thank you for the birthday card. I wasn't expecting that, and that was really sweet of you. Thank you. Birthday's on the 4th, so well in advance, but thank you. I, if I'd known it was a card, I wouldn't have opened it quite yet. Um, use mobile data. Come on. Here we go. So I'm just trying to find yes I accept that and continue and um, some flowers anyway so if you have a look under new arrivals oh I'm gone a minute Lisa, Lisa's shouting at me um, I've cracked on with the sewing room. 16 calyx boxes of fabrics condensed to three full car load with a charity shop next week and the topaz has been serviced and selling it oh, I was going to ask you about your machine if you'd sold it yet Lisa's got a, a sewing, sewing and embroidery machine for sale. Um, still trying to find the name of this, this fabric. But if you are oh, new arrivals, here we go. So it'd be nice to tell you what it's called, wouldn't it? So this one is Clothwork Sunnyfields Watercolour Sunflower Cotton Green. And again, Clothwork's lovely quality always is. Um, so we've got a few of these. This one is Sunnyfield's Butterfly. So it is a collection, and a collection means they all go together. Uh, I'm very good, thank you, Liana. Oh, it's Megan's oh Megan's mum's 60th birthday today. Hello and happy birthday to Megan's mum. What you bought her? Oh, did you make her something? And what are you doing? You're going out. Hang on a sec. Um, where have you gone, Megan? I've lost you. You were going out somewhere. Oh, they. Oh no. Um, so we're going for a nice little posh restaurant. Oh, are you going to wear your Lurex dress? I think a, a posh restaurant deserves a Lurex dress. And you did look beautiful in that. Um, there you go. Lisa's advertising her sewing machine. If anybody's interested on um, on YouTube at the moment, so have a look. Um, Peggy Sue says happy birthday. Hello, Dawn. Hello, Yvonne. Baby grand. Oh, Linda's had a baby granddaughter with her. How lovely. Um, so this again, the, um, Sunnyfield's Butterfly Cotton Indigo. And then still in the, oh no, this is a new collection actually. I love this one. It's got a very kind of oriental feel to it. Let me just find the Elephant Garden. There it's called Elephant Garden Pink is that one and it's got when you look i don't know if you can see on the camera it's got um, a slight metallic um effect on the rainbows so yeah really really pretty i love that one i love the naive kind of outline of the elephants and it's just very oriental to me just i really like that and then from this is cloth work still and then from that same collection is this one which is Elephant's Garden Flowers and Tiles Blue. So those two kind of go together really well. I'm kind of thinking, what would you make out of that? Oh, Valerie's just got a pink parcel. Um, Peggy loves making bags with sunflowers. They are, they are happy flowers, aren't they, sunflowers? Um, a pansies are always happy flowers, I think, as well. Um, Amanda loves elephants, so does her daughter. And Olivan loves butterflies. Um, Oh, Stephanie's been making the block a month. Oh, good. Enjoying making all the different techniques. Got a new one on Friday, because, of course, it's the first on Friday. Uh, tried to put a new book and they said I could not have the discount unless I spent £20. Is that correct? Is that... Wh where did you try to pre-order it? Um, I'm not sure where that was. If that's on my website, then you can you can pre-order under £20. That's fine. Let me know where... or Let, let me know where you were trying to order it from, Helen. I don't really deal with anybody else's websites apart from mine, so I might not be able to help you, but let me know. Um, hello, Marianne in Suriname, is that? I don't know where that is. Where are you? Let me know. 
So again, cloth works really lovely quality. You can tell, you know, as soon as you get it home and you're feeling it, it's nice and smooth and you just know you've got really, really lovely, pretty fabrics there. So those are all of the new prints that we have for you. Do you know, I think we've still, still got some sale things on the website as well. Um, Kim decided after the weekend, because it was so busy, um, when we had the 10% off certain items sale, that she was going to keep some of them on there for you. So have a look on the sale department as well. Um, everything, oh, hi in Oregon, says Kelly. It's a dress layer. I've worn it a lot, but it's just so nice in this weather. It's nice and cool. Um, next. Um, love to see the sun in your studio. It's a bit dull in Norfolk. Oh, it's, th there's no sun in the studio, to be honest. This is all lighting. Gary's, uh, Gary's very good at lighting, it's his, his, it's his thing. So we've got the blinds are drawn, there's blackout on, on the windows. This is all lit. So it looks like this in the middle of winter or the middle of summer. Um, where's the mice? Oh! I don't know where he's put it. She was around earlier because she was right there on my table and now she's not there. So I don't know where Gary's put her. Must be around somewhere. Um, okay, we have a new faux leather. This one, I wanted to show you this because it's actually a really difficult colour to photograph because it's called aqua. Let me show you. And that looks pretty accurate on my screen. Um, and it's, um, it's kind of a petrol blue that's got a mark on it. That's not going anywhere. Um, and it's a metallic. And it's, I've, I've not seen this one before, so absolutely brand new, literally gone on just before we went live today. Um, if you haven't seen our faux leathers before, mouse drink the gin and pasta, probably, I'll be there later. Um, I had two teeth out yesterday, so it helps, doesn't it? It's medicinal, still got a sore face. Um, this is incredibly soft. Sometimes with faux leathers, they can be quite, uh, quite stiff. And I think that makes them look quite cheap. It's going to be 111 in Arizona today. Oh, whoa! Next to the baby bag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's, a, she's in a pot next to the baby bag. Um, yeah, sometimes when these faux leathers are stiff, I mean, they, they have their place. Um, or if they're too shiny, I just think they look a bit cheap. And, and this doesn't. It, it really... It's just so, it's incredibly soft, it's called Super Soft Faux Leather, but it's also got a stretch knitted backing to it. So it does have a little bit of stretch in one direction, which means that if you're dressmaking with it, that's going to be perfect. I have made skirts out of this before, I put sleeves into a jacket with this before, and it works really well. And because it's got the lining to it, it does, it's not sticking to you. It's not like you're wearing plastic. I'm bearing up, Michelle, thank you very much. Hello, Zuliana. Is that you in, in Malaysia? Hopefully I've, I've pronounced that right. Um, somebody bought the leather. Oh, sorry, you're whizzing, you're whizzing around. Stop whizzing around. Um, I'm just going back a bit. Claire's just joined the live. Like the duffel bags behind you, there's something we're demonstrating soon. I'll explain that they're half yard club projects. I'll explain in just a second. Um, so Liana, th I, I think I did read your comment. They, hello, yes, from Malaysia. I'm a bit behind, I'm afraid. Um, oh, and it helps the bruising. That's a good idea. I've just been taking gin. Um, the nose behind you in the new winter. Well, yes, they are. I shall talk to you about those in just a second as well. Uh, how do I give purchase when purchasing fabric? Kath, if you... There's a coupon box when you go to check out on the website and you just put the coupon code in there, your coupon should have a code. Um, depends how, to, to be honest, depends how old your gift voucher is. If it was bought off the old website from last week, let me know because I might need to issue you a new one. Otherwise, just put the code in and it should work. If it doesn't, just let me know. Um, anyway, faux leathers, um, you can wash this. It's recommended on a cool wash. I've washed it on a 30 degree wash and that's worked absolutely fine. Um, don't iron it from the front because it will melt but you can iron it with steam, with a hot iron from the back. Um, and in fact, it will, um, it will be creased when you get it home. So the best thing to do is to iron it before you start working on it, but it's, it's just so nice to work with. Um, and again, that's, that's the, the brand new one, that's the Aqua, literally just gone just now. Um, I've got something else to show you in a sec. 
So I haven't got tons and tons of new stuff, but what I have got is very nice. Um, hi, Sharon. Um, thank you, Ziliana. That's nice. Right, so that's that. Just to let you know, we've got overlocker threads on the website now as well. Those are brand new. I've got a few different colours and two different sizes. Two different sizes. Um, that's my new teeth. Either uh, 2,000 metres or 5,000 metres. So stock up on those if you've got an overlocker because they're great value as well. I'm going to put those. I need a bigger room. That's on the floor. Uh, Jill loves the aqua, yes. Um, oh, you, oh, thank you, Alan. Welcome back again for the 1st of July. Uh, what is this fabric, says Georgie? That is the, the, the brand new faux leather that we have. So I thought Bobbin was coming in, but she's not. Um, right. So these are the next projects for the Half Yard Club, which come out on Friday. There will be a video and you'll have your step-by-step -step instructions. And there's only one pattern piece, and that's for the end panel, because everything else is rectangles, so I didn't want to, uh, to waste your paper and your ink printing out rectangles. Um, and I've kept it simple, as in they've only got patch pockets, so we haven't got elasticated pockets and zip pockets on the inside or anything like that. There are patch pockets on the inside, on both sides. There are patch pockets on each end. There are patch pockets on the front and on the back, and it meets in the middle with a double zip. So I think for an overnight bag, or a weekend away bag, or a holiday bag, or a gym bag, or a sports bag, and I think it's one of those as well. I mean, this is in the, I can't remember the name of the fabric. Um, that's one of the fabrics on the website. I'm sure you'll find it. Um, but I have put a, a firm fleece on the back of that. This one's made in a canvas. And don't, don't they look different? So that one's just loads of fun, and this is just so classy. And that's using two different um, uh, uh, types of canvas. Um, so, so I can't remember what it's called, but it is there under canvas. Again, with the double zip in the brown on the top. And then this one is the navy faux leather, which we have got back in stock. I'm not sure if it's actually gone on the website at the moment, but if you're looking for the navy faux leather and it's not there, it will be soon. No, it does. I mean, that's. I think it's a very simple bag. Um, if you wanted to add a couple of D rings on the end and make a long shoulder strap as well, you're going to need some extra fabric. But you could do that as well. Uh, best press, surely. I'll ask. I'll ask him. Um, I didn't realise we were out of it, to be honest. Andrew says what I was what looking to make for a weekend away bag. It's a week bag, not an overnight bag. I just think it's really useful. I, I was looking at them. Um, I don't get out very often or go away very often, but I was asked to go to a, um, oh, what was it called? Not a book signing. I, I, I made an appearance as an author um, at the book festival in Yeovil. And uh, I had an overnight stay, and I thought, I, I don't have a bag to stay overnight. And I was looking at them on the next website, and these things are so expensive, and I, I wouldn't use it that often. so. I'd rather make my own, save a bit of money. You'll you'll need half a meter, half a meter of each of the contrast and the plane, and just over half a meter of the lining. So I'd order a meter of lining and half a meter of two others. You'll have some left over, but if you're ordering, then that's what what you would order. But what I wanted to show you with those, could add wheels on. That's a good idea. Um, hot and sunny in Cape Breton. Oh, busy sewing for local craft sale. That's Patricia. Um, I want to show you this. This is a, a firm fleece. Now it looks a little bit like 630s, 640s, but it's stiffer. And for these bags, I think you could use a 630 or 640 to have a very soft bag. You could use a foam, but you're going to get a lot of thickness around areas like this and when you're putting the zip in. So I do suggest in your instructions and the, and the video for that, that if you're going to use a foam, then um, trim it back to the seam. But you don't need to with this one. Um, and it's, um, it's, quite, it's quite different. It's kind of moldable. Um, and it is firm, but you can still sew through it and you can cut through it. And it's very fine. So it's only about 
what was that, a couple of millimetres, eighth of an inch in thickness. Um, but it's stiff enough to give you the firmness for a bag like that. Or if you're making boxes and storage boxes and, and things like that. Which one, Angela, I've used? Um, these are all stuffed because they've all just been photographed. So let me take this out. Because they, they like to look their best when they're having their pictures taken to my bags. Um, I've just used a cotton lining. So that's a grey cotton, and you can see there you've got the, the two patch pockets on the inside as well. So just grey cotton, that's all I've used on that one. And on the green one, I used a burgundy. It's the same as the contrast on the pockets. So that one's a burgundy. And on that one, I've used a brown. It's got dust on it. So just a dark brown but they're just plain cotton lining you can use whatever you like for the linings but I've used just used plain cotton on those so this lot um, have you plans to do a sewing retreat oh, if I had time Carol that would be a nice idea um, Oh, talking over lockers. Um, so, yeah, so this is brand new again literally only just gone on the website and it is very affordable I, I was thinking that Lisa putting piping on but I wanted it to be a really easy bag to make for this one piping would look lovely around there because then you could echo the piping across where the um, the lining peeps over there as well and, and putting zip pockets on might be useful for you too um, oh how, how you doing Janet she's been for a weigh in today um, think about buying an overlocker but would you use it very much depends what you're making Jean if you're dressmaking, yes, definitely an overlocker. If you're working with fine fabrics that fray a lot like viscose, definitely an overlocker. Um, but if you're not, if you're making bags and cushion covers and curtains and that kind of thing, then then maybe not. Maybe you wouldn't use it quite so much. Um, until set gift code, two vouchers, both process in May 22. Oh, Kath, could you email me on enquiries at debbieshawsewing.com? And um, and I'll I'll take a look into it. Just give me the details of the gift vouchers that you've got, if you could, and how much they're for, and I'll look into that for you. All right, a gin retreat would be fun. <laughs> yeah, forget the sewing, Lois. We'll just have the gin. <laughs> yep. So again, this is um, it's washable, it's sewable, it's cuttable, it's easy to useable, it's thinable. This is uh, it's the firm fleece, Shirley. I've just called it firm fleece. And it's in pre-cut half metre lengths, but it's 150 centimetres wide, so it's quite a huge piece. Um, but price-wise, when you look at your H630s and 40s, you've probably got a little bit more fabric there for less than those are two. Um, but it's not a fusible one, it's a sewing one. If you want to fuse it, um, then I suggest you use a bit of 505 spray to stick it in place. But it's, I, I like it because it's so thin. And, you know, if you make, if we could gather it, but it's still, so it stands up all by itself. It's, it's, it's quite an incredible fabric. It's, um, yeah, quite exciting when we saw this. Um, but bags and boxes, I've made makeup bags with it. This is going to come in some of the kits that I'm doing on uh, Create and Craft as well. So I've been making tote bags, tote bags, makeup bags, the curved top tote can't remember but all of that kind of stuff this is actually perfect <laughs> funny Helene we were talking about spiders earlier hi Colette a Christmas fabric collection I do have a Christmas fabric collection coming out Cheryl um, I don't know when it is because I haven't been sent any samples yet mine's called gingerbread so we have different names uh, Ziliana batting is uh, tends to be um, an, an American term, I know a lot of other countries do, you probably do as well. Um, it can be a fleece, it can be a firm interfacing, uh, we tend to call it wadding over here. Wadding I tend to think of as um, the 820s and the things they use for quilting. I'd, I'd, I'd call this more a fleece, I wouldn't use it for quilting, it's too stiff. Um, but it's more of a, a firm interfacing, I, I would call it. Um, it's not as thick as Bosal, Rosina. Bosal is about a quarter of an inch thick and this is half the thickness, which makes it a little bit easy to use for. How much of it would you need? Half a, half a metre is fine. Half a metre will make that bag easily. 
Um, hello, Debbie. Did you email me on Sunday? Kath, if you email me on Sunday, I'd, I'm on the ball with these emails because I get a ping. I don't with any other email account, but with the shop account, I get a ping. Um, so I would have answered it if I, it, if I would have seen it. <laughs> yeah, ca capital letters. If you can make my ping louder, then maybe that would work. <laughs> Um, on my holes in centre parts of the grandchildren. Oh, oh, that takes me back, Geraldine. I, I, I modelled a brochure. In fact, several of them for centre parts with the kids when they were little. Um, they wouldn't be using them now. But um, yeah, there was uh, both the kids. Oh, we, we rode bikes. It's funny. When, in, in those days, I used to do a lot of modelling with the kids, and um, we'd because Gary was really busy at the time. We'd. <laughs> Agencies would put together families. So if you had a parent that had their own children, that, that's a bonus because then you don't have to pay chaperones and things. Um, but because Gary was always so busy, he wasn't going to be our dad. So agencies would put you together with different dads. My kids have had so many different dads over the years, included in the Centre Parks brochures. So we've been cycling through the woods of Three River. There's one chap who was a dad. And then you'd be jumping in the swimming pool with another chap who was a dad. We did a Butlins brochure with another chap who was dad. Um, we went to Israel to do a brochure for the Hilton Hotel. We stayed in a seven-star hotel. Oh, I know. With another dad. Um, that was amazing, actually, because um, uh, yeah, we were there for two weeks. All they wanted to do was to act like a family on holiday. Um, and then we went camel riding, we went on a jeep safari um, and Tyler was, he was only little but he was asking when do we start work? So this is it, this is work. Oh no, free suntan and everything, free gin. Not in Israel. Um, as other two types of fleece, softer or firmer. The other two are softer. Um, this is quite firm. I don't think, oh, I might have some. Oh well, there we go. I've got some odds and ends. This is an H630. So you can see it's quite, it's quite soft. Great for um, the smaller items if you just wanted to add a little bit of substance. I like to use something like this on um, cushion cover fronts, particularly if I'm embroidering them or quilting them because it gives a little bit of oomph to your fabric. But you can see it's quite soft. So this is actually about the same thickness, but it's stiffer. So if I show you the two together here, sorry if I'm blinding you with whiteness. Maybe this is a little bit thicker than the 630, so it's about the same thickness as a, a 640, but it's thicker. Oh, with the, no, not with the dads, no. Oh, not that kind of modelling. <laughs> no, we were like, oh, did they spoil your rotten head, your own rooms? And days like that. My son modelled as a dad in an advert for a pram and he's not a dad yet. I, I, when, when my eldest was a baby, I did some modelling with him for baby boots and he was in a, one of those carry slings and apparently the client said, um, you know, the pictures look very nice but she's not old enough to have a baby. She was, he was mine? Got on the cover of the brochure anyway, you know. Oh, hi Nancy. Uh, Clarissa, if you need to message me, it's um, enquiries at debbieshawsewing.com. Hi, Letitia in France. Um, I tried and it wouldn't take six. Oh, Julie Jones. Oh, the fleece. Really? Is that what you mean? Have you tried... Julie, is it? The, oh, sorry, I'm missing your comments from earlier on. Please don't tell me we've sold out of this already. That would be six. I'm just scrolling back. It would be six units. You're trying to order six. Right, I've got I've got another fabric to show you. And while you're looking at that, I'm going to check stock. <laughs> Okay, so this one is called, how old the line? Um, the Floral Cottage Patchwork Cotton Poplin. Um, this one, I just think, it, I, I just think it's so pretty. Um, sorry, this is quite rude, isn't it? 
There we go. Um, the print's quite small on it too. I mean, you could cut these out. Oh, I tell you what would look nice with this. Um, that's firm enough fleece. No, and I'm not on the wrong page there. Oh, do you know, if we're out of stock of the fleece, it will go straight back into stock as soon as I've finished here because I know we've got a lot of that. We did put an awful lot on there as well. Well, thank you, Annette. That's really sweet of you. I really appreciate that. And it's in Utah. Um, hi, Chris in Ohio. Oh, Jill, I, do you know, I could write a book. <laughs> um, I've been very fortunate in, in my career. It's taken me all over the world. Um, I've met some wonderful people and um, yeah, I've had, a, I've had a, a, a very nice career. And you know, the fun, funny thing is um, the way that things actually turn out because I've always been able to sew, but my main career was working in TV. Um, I'm, I modelled for a lot of years, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very tall, so I never did the high fashion stuff. I was never on the cover of Vogue or anything like that. Um, but catalogue work, perfect for that because I was only five foot six when I was modelling, two inches shorter now. Um, so that was always my career but I could always sew. Uh, Gary was a fashion photographer so he'd, he'd travel all over the world doing swimwear catalogues and glamour shoots and, and, uh, and all kinds of stuff. So he's, he's, he worked a lot in South Africa, he's been to, worked in Jamaica, he's worked in, oh all over the place. Um, and he had a huge studio in Nottingham doing fashion photography there as well. And yeah, Lisa, it's all your fault I ended up like this. Um, and when I started working on the shopping channel and started doing the sewing, and Gary started doing the photography for the sewing, it was like all of the, the skills that we had, like the, the, the TV work of selling on TV, selling sewing machines on TV, sewing, writing books, having the books photographed. And it's, it brought all of the skills that we had professionally into one building and we're working together. Um, but it's, it's just odd how, after all of those years working separately, everything came together and we worked together doing, doing what we've always done, but doing it together. Um, and now Kim's working with me and for me and designing herself as well and is an author. And now Tyler's just come on board as well. Still working on that. But yes, he's, he's in the business too. So it's, yeah. Um, so yeah, for, it's funny how things turn out, isn't it, as they say. Um, it's not the fleece, Toby, it's my... Your order at the weekend. Sorry, I've can you Can you message me, Julie? Because I keep missing your posts on care because they go around so quickly. Um, let me know what you were trying to order. If, it's, if you're trying to order six units of something and it's not letting you, it's probably because there isn't that much left. So if you've only got half a metre or a metre or, or you know, two metres of something left, then it's not going to let you order more than there's actually on there. So that's probably what it was. But let me know what it is you were trying to order and uh, I shall look into it. Hello, Estella from Texas. Oh, bye, Helene. See you next time. So anyway, so that's, that's that one. I just think that's quite... English country cottagey kind of thing. Anyway, we're going to look at sewing machine feet, weren't we? So while you're there, I've got two I wanted to talk about today. These aren't standard that come with a sewing machine normally. Um, what kind, sorry to suppose, what kind of lining material will we need for the bag at the weekend? Just cotton. Um, I, th I don't know the measurements off the top of my head. They'll all be on their instructions when they're released on Friday. Um, but I think it's just over half a metre. And just, just a plain cotton, well, anything you like. Have a pattern cotton, use anything you like on the inside. I've just used cotton. Uh, Linda is camera shy. <laughs> He's worked on, I don't know if you watch, if you used to watch Creighton Craft, and it was the old Creighton Craft, and they had a magic hands. Because um, Tyler was a floor, well, he is a floor manager still. He's, um, he was one of the ones that didn't really want to be on, on camera, so. So I'm, I'm not sure, maybe on Christmas Day. I'll get them all in on Christmas Day. So anyway, let's take a look first of all at the piping foot. So this, it actually looks a little bit like um, an invisible hem foot. You've got two grooves underneath here. And this one, they come in different sizes. I think this one will take up to about four millimetres in the width of um, our piping cord. So I'm going to use the piping cord we've got on the website, which they say is size two, which is 
Oh, it doesn't say how wide it is. I think this isn't um, a, a quarter of an inch. But that fits nicely into the groove underneath the foot. And um, I need some fabric to wrap around there as well. Uh, deco bond on some leather today. Do you think that will work? I don't know what deco bond is, Nancy. If it's the same as our um, Decaville, you're going to have problems applying it. Um, it. If it's porous, then yes, but with the, um, with the faux leather, you need to apply the heat from the back because you can't put the iron on the top of it. So if you've got something like a fleece or a wadding or, or something like that, where the steam goes through it, it you don't kind of glide the iron over and you put it up and down, but you can steam through the fleece onto the onto the backing but if you've got something like uh, something that's not porous like over here we have Decaville I don't know if you do which is quite plasticky um, you're not going to be able to get the heat you're, not, you're not going to get the heat through very well for it to be able to stick best thing to do is to try a bit but avoid using steam on anything that's not porous because <laughs> it just bounces back up in your face um, so anyway so that's piping foot and then the second foot we're going to have a look at is this one and that's the rolled hem foot these again come in different sizes and it's got like a a whirly bit around the end there which is where your fabric's going to go hopefully that'll make more sense when we start using it um, but they'll, they'll create a very narrow hem which is about a couple of millimeters or about an eighth of an inch folded over twice and it's very difficult to do that without um, uh, without the right foot. Doable, but difficultly doable. So I need to cut some fabric actually for this one. Um, love it when you chat to each other. So let me take my little cutting mark. I'll just do a little bit, just a little, a little length of it. I'll have the bigger cutting mat, I think. Just so you can get an idea of how to use it. Now there is a method, there's a math behind how wide your fabric needs to be. And to be honest, I find it easier to just kind of gauge it. Road cutter, ruler. And I'm just gonna cut a strip, say an inch wide, I think that could be fine. Pink on pink stands out, right? Let's chop a bit of this off. We'll only do a little bit. Because I've, I've sent Kim much. I may as well do the whole piping thing and make a cushion cover. I think I did it, didn't I? Didn't I do a, a, a piping on a Wednesday uh, as how to make it with a zipper foot and put it around and join it? I'm sure I've done that. Let me know if you want me to do it again. Basically, when this wraps around the cord, Whatever you have, whatever distance from the edge of the cord to the edge of the fabric is going to be your seam allowance. So if you're making, I mean, that's, oh, what, about three-eighths of an inch. That's going to be my seam allowance. If you're making something with a half an inch, five-eighths of an inch seam allowance, then cut this wider. You can always cut it wider and then chop it down to the right size afterwards. But that's important that you get this section right here. Um, and that'll make more sense in just a minute, I hope. So let me just move all this out of the way, lock that off, and bring this in. So we'll go over here, mm -hmm. yeah, quite close up there. So we'll drop this foot off, and drop this one on. And the needle is actually sitting to one side of this. I did, yes. Hazel, thank you. And then we're going to wrap this around the cord. I'm going to sew from this side and sew quite close. Now, I'm, I want to explain this to you as well. So I'm going to put this under the right-hand groove so that the cord is sitting nicely underneath there. And then we'll start to sew, and as I'm sewing, I'm folding this over so the raw edges meet. And that groove is just keeping the piping in the right line. Now these stitches are very close to the piping. So as I'm actually making the piping, I don't want them that close. So I'm going to move my needle over a little bit 
and then carry on sewing. So just make sure the edges of the fabric meet and your piping cord's going underneath that right hand groove. You could do the left hand groove, you may have to move your needle over. And then we'll sew. So yes, you can do this with a zipper foot, but if you're doing a lot, it may be worth getting hold of one of these feet because it just makes it so quick and so accurate. So again, I haven't, I've, I've sewn quite close here and then I took the stitches away, of just a couple of millimetres away from that cord because then when this goes on my fabric, then I'm going to sew it closer. And again, whatever distance you have here is going to be your seam allowance. So just really important to make sure you get that width right. So if anything, if you wanted to cut the whole fabric wider, then make the piping and then trim it down to size, you may get a more accurate finish. Um, I find that making piping with a sewed overlocker is much easier than using a sewing machine. I've never done that, Linda, on my overlocker, I have to say. I'll give that a go. Um, oh, Leanna, okay, I shall see you on Saturday morning. Don't know what we're doing. Don't know what we're doing on Saturday. So that's that one. Let me show you. I'll just cut another piece for a, the um, rolled hem foot. Again, those, those do come in different widths as well. They're, they're not the kind of feet generally that you would have um, with your sewing machine, but um, it's quite nice to see these things, isn't it? A lot of them, you don't even know that they're available. If there are any other feet, <laughs> it is easier, Lisa, a lot more accurate. Um, do let me know. Um, and uh, again, the easiest way to do that is to send me a message, not to necessarily right on here there's there, uh, I get hundreds of um, uh, messages coming up continually and I don't always um, oh well I've got a 70 piece feet just found a single zip of presser for nice um, I don't always pick up the messages I, I, on, on here certainly you, you probably notice because they're literally scrolling through all the time um, so yes probably easy to send me a message uh, I do I do get round to answering messages on Facebook eventually. I'm not the quickest on Facebook, so emailing me is probably the easiest way to do it. Yeah, Lisa's not going to be here on Saturday. Granddaughter sitting again. Hmm. Okay, now with this foot, this one is your blind hem foot. Uh, sorry, it's not, it's your rolled hem foot. Um, it's quite easy to get into a knot when you first start sewing. So although I'm going to put this, the standard foot back on my sewing machine, just bring that in a bit. So if you're starting on the edge of a piece of fabric, roll it over twice to start with and just do a few stitches. That may seem a little bit of a cop out because you've got a rolled hem foot, but it, it does help. So I'm just going to do a few stitches first of all and stop. So I've already kind of, that's a bit messy, I've already started the roll here. So if you can, add a little bit of extra fabric to your measurement so that you can, you can do that. And then we start sewing with a rolled hem foot. And where this starts to fold, I'm going to ease that into that um, kind of tube on the front and it wants to go in there and it wants to curve so I'm just I mean take it slowly and I'm just folding that in just making sure that it's going into that curve and that's going to roll it up into a little sausage shape and give you the tiniest hem you've ever seen So that's rolled over twice with about a millimetre, is that tiny sixteenth of an inch? With a tiny, tiny um, hem. And that is such a good idea if, like with Kim, you were sewing with very fine fabrics or floaty fabrics and you don't want the hem to weight it down. Um, if you're sewing with sheer fabrics and you're going to see 
um, you know, maybe finishing the seams on the inside of your or your garment or your hemming the bottom or the sleeves. And again, you'll, on, on a thicker hem, you'll see that. With this, it just looks like an outline. It, you can, it's fairly visible. Um, and it's a very, very simple foot to use as well. And again, these do come in different sizes as well. We don't sell them on the website or anything. I just thought you might like to, um, to see how they're done, have a little bit of information. Um, oh, hi, Peggy. See you again next week. Lisa didn't see that. Should we do it again? Was I in, was I in that? What a silly thing to do. I'll do it again. <laughs> it's because I was concentrating. So what was I, do, was I doing that? That's silly, isn't it? Okay, let's move that, say, there. So we're going to start off doing a little bit. And then when you come to the rolled hem bit, I'm just going to gently feed that inside the tunnel. And it wants to go in and it wants to curve around. Am I not in the way there now? And it just twists the fabric as you go in. So I'm not doing it too quickly because I don't want the fabric to jump out. I just want to make sure that is being fed through nice, nice and evenly. It's really satisfying, actually. Okay. I think I was out of the way then. And then you've got that, again, it's a, a tiny, tiny hem, really fine hem. And it's very, very simple to do. Oh, look, I'm going all out of focus now. Let me stay still a minute. <laughs> I think that camera's not coping with being so close. Hey, there we go. So tiny slim hem. I didn't miss a bit there, look. And just fold it over twice to that amount, which I think is amazing. And that's all down to the sewing machine foot. I don't know about you, but I, I couldn't do that by hand. I wouldn't be able to fold that over twice so thin by hand. Um, oh, thank you, Linda. Fancy me doing that, honestly. So I'm, I'm glad you find, found that useful. Well, I hope you found it useful. But again, send me a message. Um, you, you can send me a message on, so I've got really itchy nose, um, on Facebook. I might not pick it up straight away, but if there's any particular sewing machine foot. I don't have a ruffler foot. I saw that one earlier on. Um, I did buy one to go with my big machine, and I ended up sending it back because it didn't work. I think they sent me one for the wrong model, so I don't, I don't have one of those. Um, Mary's found that ironing and narrow hem help when I was feeding the fabric into the fabric. Okay, that's a nice idea. Um, be watching on the train on Saturday. Off to the Royal Albert Hall to see Frankie Fowley. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> um, resident, I'll see if I can. They're really expensive. And I don't, I don't use one. I'll see, if I can, uh, I'll see if I can get hold of a ruffler foot. Um, and have a go, but I, as I, I'll be honest with you, I didn't get I didn't get on with the ruffler foot very well. Alan's got one. I think he uses this quite a lot. Um, oh, Nancy's going to gain a fifth great grandchild to join my four grandsons. Oh, how exciting! When she do <gasps> pin tucks, we can do pin tucks, Linda. I do have pin tuck feet. I've got loads. Of, I don't normally use all of these feet, so it's quite nice to. Uh, Kind of revisit them as well. Um, should we do that next week? Next Wednesday? Let's do that then. Um, okay, now, quick reminder. Um, it's, they're not here yet, so I'm, I'm whizzing backwards to get you my gnomes. Um, Sarah, I think you asked and I missed your message last week how much the kits for these are going to be, and they're going to be 29 on Create and Craft. So these two chaps... Uh, if you weren't watching last week, are uh, from my Half Yard Christmas book, which is arriving today for me to sign. I've got a few hundred copies to sign for Great and Craft, um, but they will have an exclusive for a while. And these are the two chaps on, on the front cover. Um, the show is going to be on the 7th of July, which is next week. It's next week. Gosh, this year's going quickly. Um, it's going to be on the 7th of July. And I've put together some kits to make these two. They're going to be sold separately. So if you've already ordered from Amazon or SearchPress or from me um, a pre-order of your book, 
then the kit's going to be on its own. So you can still buy the kit from Creation Craft if you wanted to make these two. Um, your kits will include the felt for the hats, the felt for the... <laughs> for that, I love them. Um, for that, I was going to do um, a fabric panel with them. I've been doing some caricatures of them, but uh, didn't quite get ready in time. Um, all of the felt for the boots and their mittens, the fabric for the dress and the bodies, um, the beard, the hair, the ribbons, the noses, everything, apart from toy filler. And I've put wire in their legs. Um, you could use pipe cleaners, that's, that's optional. Um, and there's enough there. There's no elastic in the kits. Oh, gosh, I was just looking at that thinking there's no... There will be no elastic in the kits. You have to... Oh, fancy leaving that one out. Um, unless I can reopen them. Oh, fancy missing that. But everything else that you need. Um, and the nice thing about that is you only get as much as you need because a lot of the time, like with the the yarn for the hair you'd have to buy a whole ball of yarn it doesn't take a ball of yarn and um, i couldn't find when i was looking around faux leather in any less than half a meter that's certainly not half a meter so you get the amount that you need without any wastage for those um so again that's on the seventh um at the moment um more affordable not expensive as i said you got a ruffle for alan um i love making gnomes and these are adorable they're nice, aren't they? You could put weights in them if you wanted to as well. I think they're really cute. They're one of my favourite makes. Um, I think there's only going to be enough stock for creating craft, though. So it's at 9 o'clock in the morning on the 7th. I will post on both YouTube and on Facebook before the show just to give you a reminder that I'm there. Um, but I think they're going to sell really quickly. So um, I, don't, I want you to be the first. So I know there's a lot of Crate and Craft um, viewers that you know you, of you who are viewers as, as well um, but I'd, I'd rather you who follow me have the first choice of getting hold of these but I can't put them on the website before Crate and Craft do and I think they're going to take the lot so just I'll, I'll give you the heads up as to when they're going to be on. Um, is it wool felt? No it's not wool felt it's a synthetic felt but it's a very good quality one and it's washable as well. Um, do, do you know, Connie, it is. Time's go, life is going really quickly at the moment. It's ridiculous. Andrew's going to be watching. Thank you, Mary. For the two, Anne. You get everything to make two of them for your 29.99. So, <laughs> I, just, I just love them. Eric and Ola, I called them. Um, yeah, but you won't get the instructions. So you, ne you need the book for the instructions. So um, it, it'll just be the kit to go with the book. I can't put the instructions in there as well because search press would have me guts for garters. Um, and it would be a lot more expensive. So yes, so that's, that's just the kits for the both of them. Um, technique classes are really useful. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you appreciate that. I, I, th thank you. Um, Rita, if we, if we can, um, they take an awful long time to put together because there's so many bits. And things like the, the yarn for the hair comes from the Netherlands. Um, so there's not, I have to pay somebody to chop them all up and package them and everything. So it does take a long time. So at, at the moment, we've got a few hundred, which I've offered to create and craft because they want the exclusive. Um, if there's anything left, then yes, definitely. We will have them on the website, but the same price. But we will have them on the website, hopefully, too. Uh, oh, Janet's pre-ordered the book. Could you make arm protectors for a sofa or chair, please? That's an idea. Um, the, thing, the thing is, if I do it for a Saturday, I've got to bring the chair in here so I can show how to measure it, and I haven't, haven't got an awful lot of room. Uh, the book, I, oh, I don't know how much it is. $14.99. Um, you may get a bit of a discount on Amazon. I don't know what they're selling it for. But remember, if you are a Half Yard Club member, you'll get 30% off it. It's a lot, isn't it? <laughs> if, you, if you're not a Half Yard Club member and you want to make a discount or take a discount, um, order from Search Press, who are my publishers, and uh, use the code DD105 when you go to checkout and you get 20% off. That's in the UK only, I'm afraid, but that's an offer that they're doing. Connie, I love them. They're in the new Christmas week. Yes, they're in here. I know Elizabeth is a 2022's here and gone. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll get off. 
<laughs> I shall show you my drawings at some point. We did. <laughs> did I tell you? I don't think I did. Um, we, we were sat in the garden, me and Kim, last week, and we, we, we decided to have a little bit of a design day. So I thought, I'm going to do some fabric with my gnomes. And uh, uh, we were trying to think of names for the range and uh, names for, you know, what, what should we get them doing? And Kim said, oh, you could do Nomi Campbell. So I drew a, a, a catwalk walking gnome. And then there was, um, Eric was holding uh, Ola aloft, as in Dirty Dancing. And that one was called, um, Oh, what have we called it? I'm alive. I know it all to you. Um, Gary came up with. Oh, I can't remember the name. Says we were just sat there giggling, drawing silly pictures. They will never get onto fabric, but we're just drawing these the silliest of pictures. Um, oh, I, I said Marilyn Monroe, and he said Noma Jean. So we did one with, with her with a skirt flying up, and you know, like with the the, the classic Marilyn. Anyway, that was just having us a bit of a laugh. DD105, thank you, Lois. That is the Search Press discount. That will give you 20% off any Search Press book, not just mine, any book. And if you order more than £20 worth, you get free postage as well, but it is only in the UK. Um, are you using the large oils of thread on your machine much better, don't you think? Which are these? The overlocker ones. I normally use a Gutterman on my sewing machine, to be honest. Um, and I don't know where that one came from, but it happened to be, it was when I was making this bag, because uh, that's the one in the video I was filming down here the other day with it, and it just happened to be the right colour, so I'm not sure what that brand one is, uh, what that brand is. Gnome for Christmas, that's a good one. Oh, sorry. Um, that's a good one. Um, Yvonne's just pre-ordered the book. Thank you. Okay, anyway, I must, I must go. Stuff to do love those i shall see you again um on saturday i don't know what i'm making again yet it's been I've been pretty manic but we will we will have a little project on saturday and um yeah lisa's going to be back again next wednesday um and the night's official oh i know elizabeth the longest day has been and gone it's all downhill to winter now we've only just got the sunshine um, Gary said, was it last Tuesday? Gary said, you know, this is the worst day because this, this, this is the, the last day of the, um, of the late nights, the long nights and the summer evenings. Oh, thank you, Abigail. Um, right, so, it's Wednesday today, isn't it? I have these little screens um, on my computer that say, um, Debbie, we're with you soon, see you again Saturday, see you again Wednesday. So I've got a nice start and a nice end to the videos. And I was thinking it was Saturday today. So I was about to put on there, see you again Wednesday at four. And you're going to be wondering where on earth I am on Saturday. I shall be with you on Saturday at 11 o'clock. So I'm not going to put that up. So we're going to go straight out. Um, so enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for joining me today. Again, send, send me a message if you have any particular feet. If I can get hold of them that we can demonstrate on the machine, then we'll have a go at that next week, uh, next Wednesday. So thank you for joining me and I shall see you again soon. Bye-bye. I've got to do this now. I've got to do all the technical bit because I can't put see you again next week. So I've got to do that and then do that. So we, sh we should go now. Must I live? Should be gone now. I'm going now. I think I've gone. <laughs>